Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Minor Issues Podcast. I'm Mark Thornton at the Mises Institute. There is good evidence that the skyscraper curse is dead. But what does that mean? Well, let's dig down to the foundations and see what the ramifications are. It could mean historical changes are in the works. The skyscraper curse is the unlikely correlation between the building of a record height skyscraper and a world economic crisis. The skyscraper index, first chronicled by real estate analyst Andrew Lawrence, shows that record-breaking skyscrapers are closely correlated temporally with world economic crises. In my 2018 book, Skyscraper Curse, I fine-tuned Lawrence's chronicle and extended it back in time by almost a half a century to the dawn of modern skyscrapers. The logic behind the skyscraper curse is that extended periods of easy money and credit and artificially low interest rates set in motion changes in foundational factors such as credit conditions, land prices, and business conditions and expectations that induce taller buildings. This requires adjustments in innovation in building design, building construction, building systems such as AC, water, sewage, elevators, etc., sending technological shockwaves through the industry and its supply chains. The same changes in foundational factors set in motion similar shockwaves through many industries and sectors. Thus, as I explain in my book, skyscrapers and business cycles are related in a way that ties the correlation directly to the Austrian business cycle theory, first introduced by Ludwig von Mises and expanded and illustrated by his students, F.A. Hayek and Murray Rothbard. As I have previously speculated, I was dubious about how consistent the curse correlation would remain over time. As the canals and railroad booms of the 19th century remind us, something new might come along to displace skyscraper curses. Perhaps future crises will correlate with the building of habitats on other planets or orbiting Earth. Or we could simply fix the business cycle issue, as many Austrian school economists and Bitcoin enthusiasts have suggested. I'm not sure what to make of recent developments since my 2018 book. First, there was the Jetta Tower, which was projected to ignite the next curse in 2020, when it tried to set a new record of one kilometer in height. Construction did begin in the desert of Saudi Arabia, but was shut down and eventually canceled for political reasons. The curse, however, seemed to progress with construction stopped, the economy sinking in 2019 and early 2020. The U.S. economy cooled in the first quarter and fell into recession in the second quarter before the twin booster engines of $5 trillion in COVID government spending and the Federal Reserve's $5 trillion of monetary excess were ignited. Prior to the COVID crisis, Austrian economists were predicting an economic crisis. It simply did not and could not show up in gross domestic product statistics with this tidal wave of government excesses. It seems clear that COVID allowed government to hide that economic crisis. Like other government-made disasters like World War I and World War II, it did result in what Professor Higgs dubbed the ratchet effect or the racket effect, where government spending trends have gotten a permanent boost even after a crisis is over. A previous record-setting attempt in China was stopped because they thought it would cause a skyscraper curse. But stopping the project for environmental concerns did not prevent the country from developing a mega real estate crisis that is ongoing. 
the latest attempt to outdo everyone else in terms of construction is also Saudi Arabia called The Line, a proposed megacity in the desert that was projected to be many, many kilometers long, 500 meters tall, and very, very narrow, and thus The Line. It was planned as a completely futuristic city with technological advancements and wonders all around, complete with glow-in-the-dark sand beaches and snow skiing in the desert, and even an artificial moon. Most of the record-setting skyscrapers had some amount of hubris attached to them. If you can just build a building a little taller and set a world record and put your name on it, then it might be worth all the extra cost and effort. Asian records in recent decades have wanted to highlight the region's great economic successes. However, the hubris quotient in the recent failed projects in the desert seem closer to 100% rather than in the single digits. Nevertheless, such events in the construction industry or in capital cities of powerful states cannot nullify economic theory and cannot dispose of the Austrian business cycle theory in a stealth manner. With current government policy and central bank policy, business cycles will still occur. Economic crisis will still happen. We suggested in the last episode of this podcast that we may have entered the very beginning of the next such crisis. The only alternative is policy reform that returns the money and credit industries to the market and its strict competitive and legal restrictions. The current path will only take us down the road to more economic crises and eventually hyperinflation and the destruction of society.